Bye, Ashwini. Good evening. Hi, Kartik. How are you? Yeah, all good. So far, so good. So, I think we can start the class. Uh, some people might be joining a little late. Let them join. We can start. So, Ashwini, this is very important uh, in order to do any comparison um, of any objects within the collection framework. So, by this one, we will be actually completing the collection framework. Uh, there is only one more class. Tomorrow, we will complete this one as well. Okay. So, today, we are in day 34, where we are discussing about um, how the comparable interface works internally and how comparable interface works internally. Uh, you remember like we get, we might uh, seen already how to use comparable and comparable interface, right? Now we are going to see a practical example of how we are going to use and um, in the real time, okay? So for that, what I am going to cover today is on day 34, we are going to see how comparable interface works internally. First of all, we are going to see what is that and why do we need it and how it works with the practical coding. Similarly, we are going to learn about comparator interface. What is that? Why do we need it? How it works with the practical code. Then finally, we are going to talk about what is the difference between comparable interface and comparator interface and when we have to choose any of these two, either of this, right? Comparable versus comparator. All right, uh, Ashwini, before we go into that, do you have any other question? No, Karthi, I'm good. Okay, perfect. So let's start with uh, our class today. So first of all, we are going to talk about comparable interface, okay? So comparable is an interface in Java. We are going to use both this comparable and comparator interface for doing any comparisons. When I say comparisons, which means like we are comparing the objects. Right. Let's say if you have two objects and if you want to compare uh, the, those two objects, then you can go for either of these two. Okay. So let me start with a quick example of writing it. So we are going to talk about two interfaces. Right. One is comparable. Comparable is an interface in Java. And comparator is another interface in Java. Okay, so what does this mean? Basically, this is used to do comparisons, right? Comparison of objects. That is the ideal purpose of using these two. That is the purpose of using these two. Okay. So you used to do compare the objects in Java. So whenever I say comparing the objects in Java, so since we are discussing about all the collections, collection framework, collection framework means nothing but collection of objects, right? So we mean like we will have more than one objects to deal with. So whenever we have more than one objects to deal with, and if you want to compare any of these objects, then you can happily go for either of these two, either comparable or comparable. Okay. Now we are going to start about comparable interface, first part of the class. The second part of the class, we are going to talk about comparator. Okay. So let me start from the scratch. So let me start creating a class called comparable interface demo. Yeah. So I was telling that like comparable interface is to do comparing the objects within the collection framework, right? So if you guys see here, why do we need it is to do any sorting. 
so whenever you want to compare the objects and if you want to do any sorting based on some value then you can easily go for comparable let me go with a real time example let's say you have a list of records let's say list l is equal to new array list of right you can do control shift o so that you can easily import auto import those classes okay so now let's say l dot add of let's say i want to add some objects okay let's say i want to add let's say 100 into the list and then l dot add of let's say 45 then i want to add l dot add of let's say 200 and then l dot add of let's say 150 okay can you guys tell me if i print it what will be the output if i print this l what will be the output any idea guess okay let me tell you so if you run this project you get 100 45 200 150 why is it so any idea inserts in order is in list is it correct the way how we added the same order it is stored here 100 45 200 150 isn't it so for any reason for any reason if you want to sort this data what you can go for there is a class in java called collections you guys remember like we are discussing about very beginning of the class what is collection and collections plural right so collection is an interface in java collections plural is a class in java which means it has some method right which has some utility methods which we can use it for our programming purpose so oracle developers already created this class called collections wherein we can use it to do some kind of uh, uh, you know work let's say if i want to do sorting so there is a method called sort okay so in this collections dot sort if you parse the list it will sort the data it will sort the data in within that so what does it mean if i print it after after i sorting what will be my output what will be my, my output if you guys see here 45 100 150 200 is it correct what does it mean default sorting isn't it which means numbers means ascending order alphabets means a to z isn't it is it clear if someone ask you to do sorting in your interview you can simply go for this one collections dot sort of the list that's all if they want to go for ascending order you can go for this one okay let's say now you are dealing with a simple uh list right which is adding such as just integers let's assume that i want to add some string values how i can do that how i can go for instead of integers let's say if i want to say string s for list s equal to new array list of in this i am adding s dot add of s dot add of i want to add some string values which means some num- names right let's say i would say first one let's just check and second one is easy learning of course java and i would say practical coding something like this 
right now i am going to print this one so here i would say i will separate it saying sys dot out dot print ln i'll simply put some separator so you'll know what is output of this one right if you guys see here it got added let's just take easy learning java practical coding right which means the same order however i add the data the same order it got stored isn't it now i am doing collection dot sort of now i am going to print after it got sorted so how it will be you guys see here easy learning then java then practical coding then let's just check is it right is it like a uh, sorted by a to z isn't it so whenever someone requests you to sort the data right if it is numbers if they want it in ascending order you can go for collection start sort of if it is not a number like it's a string then you can go for collection start sort of it will sort by a to z okay now this is all good this is all working fine so not typically every day we used to deal with uh, just a numbers and names right we have to deal with objects also so typical example let's say employee data right so you have employee data and you have to sort the employee objects so what does it mean let's go one more level is it clear so far nitya and uh, ashwini then i can go for objects yes kartik so now i am having a class called employee 123 data the reason why i am creating like this is like i already have some lot of class called employee internally the same package that's why i am putting like this okay so let's say i have integer let's say emp id okay and then i am having string emp name and then and then i am having let's say integer salary okay this is a typical use case we used to deal with right employee has employee id name and salary so what is the default constructor we used to write how to write the default constructor default constructor nothing but it's same as method name is same as class name but without any return type isn't it so this is nothing but default constructor what is the other way of uh, creating an object of this one by initializing this variables so this is nothing but default constructor right another one is user defined constructor you guys remember all the dots which you have learned so far you guys can easily come up now okay so which means if i simply say employee123 data e equal to new employee123 data of which means it will create an object of employee123 data with all these values will be assigned to what default values because these are all instance variables so instance variables are getting stored under heap memory is is it so whenever the constructor looks here it is going to create an object with all the default values here which means employee id will be zero string employee name will be null salary will be zero but i want to define the values when i am creating object itself how we can do that in emp id i am going to pass this parameters right so string emp name it's not necessary it should be the same variables like this but i will show you let's say in let's say self okay so here what you have to do whenever you are saying employee One two three data e equal to new employee. Let's let me create it here. Employee one two three data e one is equal to new. Let's say employee one two three data off. Right. So which is nothing but what? If I try to say system dot out printer and e one. Let me print this. So what typically happens? If I say employee one two three data off, where it comes here, isn't it? So let me run this program. If you guys see here, this one right, just employee data, right object. 
So let's say e1 dot employee ID. I want to see what is the employee ID. It will be zero, isn't it? Because it created an object e1 with the help of this new keyword and constructed is constructing these objects, right? The parameters, like whatever it has the properties of the class. Let's say ID, name, salary. Since you haven't defined anything here, so it will be initialized with the default values. Right, that's why it is zero. If I try to print with EMP name, then it will be null. See, null. So instead of doing this way, what I am trying to do here is, I want to create an object. While creating an object itself, I want to pass the values to this instance variable. How I can do that? In the constructor, you can pass those parameter values, and you can assign it to this instance variables. How I can do that? Any idea? You guys remember, like we use the keyword called this this dot employee ID, which means this refers to this current class, current object, isn't it? Is equal to whatever you are going to pass it here. I want to get it over here and then assign it to here. So in this case, how I will create an object is employee one two three data let's assume that e2 equal to new employee one two three data of i'll be passing a parameter let's say i want employee id as one string is let's say karthik and then salary let's say thousand this works fine right if i call this one this is going to call here isn't it and this one will be passed as parameter here will be passed here and this karthik will be passed to here This thousand will be passed here, isn't it? And whatever I'm getting it here, that I'm going to assign it to this instance of this particular instance, this C two, right? So similarly, I can say this dot employee name is equal to EMP name, whatever I'm receiving from the parameter. Then this dot salary is equal to sal. Is it clear, guys? How we are defining our custom defined uh, constructor? How we are creating an object for that, isn't it? So you can create an object like this, and then you can add this object to the list. Okay, you can create a list, and then you can add it. Otherwise, what you can do? There is one more way of doing it. Easy way of doing is, let's say, list. List is something, but list of what? Employee one two three data, right? It is going to store that. So this is called generics in Java. Okay, you have to define what type of data it is going to store within the diamond operator. Okay, let's say EMP list is equal to new array list of. Here you can define. Here also you can define what is the data type or what type of data you are going to store. Here we are going to store what employee one two three object. Isn't it? So what you can do here, the employee list dot add off. Since I already have an object called E two, I'm going to simply add it here. Okay. Isn't it? Now if I print this one, let's say this out dot this E two dot let's say employee ID. Okay, guys. And then I want to print E two dot Employee name. Similarly, I want to print e2 dot. Let's say salary. What is output? What is output of these three? So whatever you define here, it will be the same, isn't it? See, ID is coming as one. Employee name is coming as Karthik, and salary is thousand because you are defined like this. Is it clear? You guys can able to understand. How I am passing the value in the constructor to here, and then the, how it is getting assigned to the instance variable, and how I am getting the values, right? And this object I am going to add it in this list. Another way, another another object I am going to add it directly here, saying that instead of creating e two separately and then adding it here, what I can do simply I can say new. See, I am going to copy this one. I'm going to copy this one exactly here. 
okay so here i'm going to say id as to kartik let's say j and let's say 2000 will this works guys okay now i'm going to say this is 100 and let's say um this is 20 and let's say this is 500 okay this is san this is mari and this is kumar okay so this salary of the starting is 1000 for jay it is 2000 for santos it is 3000 and let's say money it's 1500 and this guy let's assume that 300 okay so now i'm going to print this list we will see what is this list contains so before i put that i will add some comment here so that you guys can easily let emp list original right whatever we added the original let me run this program if you guys see here employee list original you are getting something like this isn't it are you able to see what data it contains it's all object isn't it it is it is showing like only object it is printing only objects so what do you have to do can you have any idea we define we did that in last class also in order to see the exact values you guys have to go to source generate to string by choosing all the fields generate now you see you are overriding this to string method with saying employee id equal to employee id employee name equal to employee name if i go and run it now you guys see here now you can see in this original list you are able to see the first element is this one right with employee id 1 the second element is nothing but employee id equal to 2 So which means, however you store the data, because I added like E two first. E two is having one Karthik thousand, so one Karthik thousand. Then I'm adding two J two thousand, so two J two thousand. Similarly, hundred San three thousand. You guys see here hundred San three thousand, and then twenty money thousand five hundred. Right. So it means like it got added in the same list, the same order. However, the insert scenario is maintained here. The reason is that because we are using list to store the data. Is that right? Now, I want to sort the element. How I can sort it? How I can sort the data? We have a method called collections dot sort of employee list. Isn't it? But what is happening? Why it's not allowing? Collections dot sort of employee list. Okay, you just need to add this casting because here I added this generic. That's all. Right. Give me a minute, guys. Ah. Uh, Collection dot sort of even if I don't add it here. Okay, now it's good. Is it clear? Now let me go and print it after the sorting. Shall I put it like that? Employee list after sorting. Can I do like this way? If you guys see here, I'm saying it's having some cannot be cast to comparable. So what does it mean? So this collections dot sort of will be working for adding some real string or some numbers, right? But whenever you try to add some objects to list. And if you want to sort that object, then what you have to do? It is saying you cannot be able to cast it. So which means this employee class has to implements comparable. 
okay so comparable is something but interface in java introduced since 1.2 coming under util package which means it is giving some utilities right so whenever you implement some interface to your class you have to do what you have to override that unimplemented method right what is the method here you guys here there is a compare to method you guys see here the similar set of uh, data i added in the slides also you guys will be adding some employee objects here okay and here what you have to do you have to override it this compare to so here is the logic you are writing on what basis it has to be compared greater than or less than okay so what happens here is here this object whatever you are adding is nothing but employee 1 2 3 data isn't it are you guys agree with me you guys are adding what comparing what employee 1 2 3 data isn't it so you can simply say emp object right so you guys are storing what you guys are going to compare between two objects of the same thing i mean compare two means like first object then compare to of second object so what happens here is initially first you added let's say this line got executed emp list dot add of e2 okay let's say e2 got added e2 is nothing but what one kartik 1000 then whenever you call another one add of something so what happens here is whenever you call sorting so it will do sorting based on these values let me show you how it works so here you have to write a logic how you want to compare it if if you guys see here what is this one this is nothing but adding object it's nothing but the new object which you are adding so you can say if you want to sort based on let's say employee id you have employee id name and salary right if you want to sort by employee id you can do this way so this dot employee id if it is less than if it is less than the incoming object which is nothing but the second object which you are adding dot emp id then what you can do you can simply say return it say minus 1 i'll show you what it is else if else if if this is greater than 1 if it is greater than that then you can go for return positive value this is one else means what both are same right here it is less than here it is greater than else means both are same right if there is a case return zero is it clear for you guys you guys can able to understand this concept what i am doing here with respect to comparable interface i am doing this logic here this is very very important to understand because in your live code let's say ui is let's say angular okay in your angular application they are having some data in the list and they are passing the data to your front back end where you are writing in java and you have to sort it and based on that you have to insert into your table the database how you will do that let's say they are saying you know the front end table they have like in the javascript or angular they have like employee id name salary kind of thing and the requirement is you have to compare and then sort it based on some data and then you have to store it now let me see what i'm getting if you guys see here i am not getting any more errors but if you see employee list after sorting what i'm getting employee id equal to 1 employee id equal to 2 right the third element is employee id equal to 20 the fourth element is employee id equal to 100 and fifth element is employee id equal to 500 isn't it so what does it mean it is sorted based on employee id in ascending order am i right is it clear uh, ashwini and aditya both of you guys if you want to sort the data based on some field right which means like default sorting order right based on the id then i can go for comparable interface is it clear for you guys both of you is karthik okay so this right a logic to do comparable interface let's assume that you want to do it in the descending order the same thing you guys see here na employee id equal to 1 first then employee id equal to 2 second of the type right? which means it got added in the ascending order based on employee id let's say you guys want in the descending order 
you have to simply change this logic here let's say minus and plus here now let me run it you guys see here first id first object is having 500 is employee id second is 100 the third one is 20 and the fourth one is 2 and the next one is 1 which means designing order right so this is how you have to write your own logic here based on the requirement however you want to do it okay so now we'll go to the comparator interface before we go to the comparator interface anyone have any question are all clear is it all clear yes clear Karthik. okay let's say you want to um, do your custom sorting okay which means you want to do sorting on your own custom defined order or way what you can do you can go for another interface called comparator so we will see what is the difference and when we have to use what but so far we have seen about comparable interface right now let me go and create another class called comparator interface demo okay so here i will mostly take a reference from here what i'm doing here so let's say i'm assuming that like i want to do the same thing here so far okay guys like default what are we are doing with number sign string let me clear the locks. Let me go and run this program. This comparable interface class, we already seen it. Now let me go and run this program. Okay, they are all good. So this comparator interface demo class is working fine, right? Which means like I'm able to add a list, um, object to the list, and I'm able to sort it, and I'm able to get it, right? Default sorting order. And also similarly, I'm able to see in the default sorting order with respect to uh, string. Now it's a case of employee, employee data. The way what we did here is we created a class here, right? And implements comparable interface, isn't it? Similarly, what you can do, instead of implementing comparable interface, you can also implement comparator interface. Okay, instead of implementing this one, what you can do here, instead of implementing here, you can simply implement this me this method is not relevant to this class right because it came from override which is something but comparable interface comparable interface isn't it so since i already have a class called one two three it is saying it is not there yeah i won't be able to store it right so i'm storing it with this one one two three four data okay so this is what it is right now i simply have one class with main method which is having which is having a list of objects added and sorted another list of strings and sorted that's all and i have another class employee one two three four data having employee id name salary and that's all now let's say when we have to go for comparator now let's see how comparator works okay so here i say collection dot sort of yes right Similarly, if you guys see collection dot sort of, let's say I can add the same employee list here, employee list here, however I added here the same thing. Okay, instead of uh, employee one two three data, I have to add it as employee one two three four data, isn't it? Right because I am going to create an object for this class, whichever I'm writing here, right? So now if I run this program, what is the error it says? Oops, it's a typo, right? So yeah, we can able to see employee ID 2, then 100, which is ascending order, right? 200 and then 20 and then 500 like that. Now, instead of doing collection that sort of yes, right because i didn't do anything right so what you have to do you have to go for after you have to 
you have to sort this employee list comma now what we did here this class is implementing this comparable interface right so for that instead of writing a class and then like implementing here the other way of writing this comparable interface we call it as uh, you can write it as anonymous in the class okay we will talk in the future uh, when you go to 1.8 features we will see how we are writing it so what you can do here is you can simply say new comparator of within this one you can write your own logic okay whenever we say comparator of i need to override the unimplemented methods right so let me show you so here that unimplemented method is nothing but compare but here it is called compare to there is a difference here compare to here this compare what is this object what is object this object is nothing but employee 1 2 3 data or oh, sorry 1 2 3 4 data right that is object we are comparing so both objects are employee 1 2 3 4 data so here you can say adding object this one is i think uh, i can say existing and then adding however it is easy for us to remember let me check adding and then existing okay adding object this is the existing object so what does it mean the way how you guys overwrite here this compare to to do ascending order and descending order similarly i can able to define my own logic inside compare method so if you guys see here in this method you are you are comparing this object the current object with the object which you are passing isn't it here you are passing both objects here here you are not going to use this method here like this keyword right so what you can do if one logic else if let's say another logic and then else another logic let's say return zero so what do you have to do here adding object right dot employee id let's say less than existing object dot employee id that is a case i want to return let's say minus 1 else if this is greater than that right if it is greater than this one then i have to return positive value which is nothing but return 1 else means both are same both the employee id is the same then i am going to return 0 shall i go and run this program i can run it but i have to print it right after it got sorted so let me see how it is sorted right i can say after comparator sorting let me go and run it you can see here it got sorted let's say 2 20 what else 100 then 500 which is ascending order so if you see that it is in ascending order if you want to change it to descending order you have to change this value let me go and this for you can see here 500 then 100 then 20 and then 2 and then 1 isn't it so this is how you can use comparator interface to do the sorting is it clear in so far implementing here you can implement directly here as well you can override this method compare method here this compare method comes from compare interface if you guys click on here so comparator is also an interface in java since 1.2 okay and we have a method called compare of object 1 comma object 2 so that is what i have renamed this adding object and the existing object and i am just checking the data right between these two is it clear able to understand this comparator interface everything remains same only thing is we just make change in this compare instead of using comparable interface we added comparator here and then we have overwritten the method compare method in case of comparable interface we have overwritten compare to method because 
this interface compare comparable interface contains a method called compare to isn't it but comparator interface contains a method called compare so now you are able to see uh, you are able to sort the data let's assume that you want to sort the element uh, i mean employee object based on uh, salary what you can do object of dot salary then object dot salary right then this salary dot this salary now let me go and run the program that's all i made a change if you guys see here it is sorted based on salary see this guy santosh is having salary of 3000 and then jay is having a salary of 2000 so which is a descending order 3000 2000 1500 salary and then this guy 300 salary is it clear whenever you want to sort based on some fields which is nothing but our custom defined sorting if you want you can go for comparator interface in the yes yes karthik okay perfect uh, ashwini and uh, uh, nitya we will regroup in 2 minutes and then i will go with the remaining topics to cover today we will regroup in 2 minutes okay uh yeah karthik i won't be able to attend the second one have, uh, okay, so no, i'll you. i'll catch up tomorrow thank you thanks karthik mm-hmm. okay um uh, so this is clear uh, nitya for you to understand the comparison yeah it's karthik okay perfect so the reason is that right so when we have to use what right that we will discuss now in this part of the class so whenever we want to sort a data let's say by default sorting order you have to go for comparable interface whenever you want to do with any custom defined thing then you can go for uh, comparator interface okay so let me go with the slide let me explain it so this is the difference between comparable interface and comparator interface okay so comparable is interface in java comparator is also interface in java so what is the difference right so comparable interface if you use it it will give you like default or natural sorting order whenever i say natural sorting order which means numbers means ascending order strings means alphabetic order if you go for comparator interface you can define your own custom sorting based on which field you want you can define it and you can do it right and in the comparable interface the method which we have to overwrite is nothing but compare to in the comparator interface the method which we have to overwrite is nothing but compare of where you have to pass two objects right so here it is coming under lang package java dot lang package which means language in the core and here it is coming under util package so util package means nothing but these are all like, like introduction java 1.5 which is nothing but um, for utilities right and if you guys see here the comparable interface you can use it for all wrapper classes okay and in comparator you can use it for collator or rule based collator like only two classes you can use it so these are main difference between comparable and comparator interface okay now we have to understand when we are can use comparable when we can use comparator okay so if you guys see here the comparable is something but java dot lang dot comparable right it is coming under this lang package and it is having a method called compare to of object one so a comparable object is capable of comparing itself with other object that is what important okay so here what we did here in the comparable what we did this dot employee object what is this one refers to this current object right current objects employee id comparing with incoming employee objects employee id right so it is capable of comparing itself with other object so the class itself must implements comparable interface that is why this has to implement comparable interface only then you will be able to compare it because you are using this class to be compared with this class object has to be compared with the objects which you are trying to add it okay so it can be used by using this one like by using comparable we can implement only one sort which means something but it's a person dot id here you can see employee id based on that we are able to sort it 
okay the typical example uh, like string right string date calendar they already have comparable interface internally okay now let's talk about when we have to go for comparator so comparator interface is coming under util package and it has a method called compare of object 1 and object 2 right so basically this comparator interface is having a feature of comparing two different objects you can also compare two different objects also here it's not necessary that you have to compare the same object type let's say you want to compare uh, student object with employee object also you can able to compare it right let's say you have two objects student and employee and student also you have student id student name and uh, uh, mark and uh, employee have employee id employee name and salary but you want to compare the id let's say student id versus employee id you can able to do it because student object is different and employee object is different isn't it that is possible with respect to comparator so the class is not comparing it instance but some other class instance so here what happens is with respect to comparator what we are doing is this object is compared with this object that's all it's not comparing with this object it's not necessarily that you have to compare this object with this one isn't it let's say you can have another class called student class and then you have some uh, student id and like that and then you also you can able to compare it okay so that is a difference between comparable and comparator interface and uh, if you guys see here by using this one we can implement many sorting sequence which means let's say uh based on id name age anything you want you can do it so in other words what we can say whenever you are implementing comparable which means i can compare myself with another object that is what literal meaning or layman terms meaning whenever you are implementing comparator interface which means i can compare two other objects which means i am comparing two objects here right like i am not comparing exactly with this object i am not using this here this is it whatever object i am adding it here i am just want to compare it then i can go for compare whenever i want to compare with the existing object then i have to go for comparable if you guys see here in both the classes or both the interfaces we can able to achieve ascending order descending order here also you can able to achieve ascending or descending order but it is very very important to understand when we have to go for comparable when we have to go for comparator okay so whenever i want to compare my current uh, class object with another object then i have to go for comparable interface whenever i want to compare two different objects or two other objects then i can go for comparator is it clear nitya this one you are able to understand uh, yeah yes clear karthik okay so i took one quick example here so similar to what we have written in our coding so let's say you have a class called employee which implements comparable okay you have employee id name age salary okay let's say you want to sort this uh, employee objects based on let's say name then what you can do here you can simply say one create one uh, comparator let's say name comparator and then you can simply say new comparator of within that you can override here the compare method right e1 e2 there you can simply call compare to of e1 and e2 based on name let's say if you want to create one comparator based on id then you can simply create let's say public static id comparator is equal to new comparator of in this one for the same employee object e1 e2 you can simply say get id you are comparing with e1 get id comparing with e2 get id and then you are returning the integer right and if you see typical this employee class has default constructor and also custom different constructor where you are passing id name age salary and you are assigning it to this is it clear this is another way of another example which i want to show you guys when we can use comparable and comparator in typical example whenever you want to compare the data you can simply go for comparable okay but whenever you want to go by let's say compare with a name or compare with id and if you are sure that you are going to add only the same data type then you can go for comparable if you are not sure what type of data will be added let's say employee data and then another one is student data then which means like there is a possibility to compare employee object with student object then both objects are different isn't it then you can go for comparator right 
So in the compare to, you can define your logic here. But if you use uh, comparable, in the compare to method, you will be using only one sort, let's say only ID, ID or whatever it is, right? But in case of comparator, you can go for name, you can go for ID, whatever you want. You can define it with the help of different, different uh, IDs, names. Okay, and this is a main uh, main program where you have, let's say, list of uh, employee where you're adding E1, E2. You are creating E1, E2 with, I think, 5, 8, like this. And then whenever you say collection dot sort of list, it is going to call at the rate of compare to because collection dot sort of list means it is going to call comparable class. And that is nothing but it is going to call the compare to method, isn't it? Where it is going to compare E1, E2. Right. First, what it will do internally, work, how it does is first it is going to compare this dot ID. This is nothing but nothing. The very very first time E1, then greater than E1. So it means like it will add E1 first, right? And then when the second element got added, list dot add of E2, it is going to compare E1 with E2, right? So that's where it is going to compare, and then based on the uh, ID, it is going to add it. So it is going to add it like this. In case of here. If you can see here employee dot name comparator, which means you are going to call this other rate of compare of O1 and O2, which means nothing but first object is E1, E2. So here you are comparing E1 and E2 based on the name. E1, E2 will be passed over here as a parameter, and that will be compared against by getting a name and then comparing the names. Similarly, if you see here employee dot ID comparator, it is going to call the same ID compare, but it is going to call ID comparator of, which is nothing but this one, isn't it? So internally it will be passed as here. E1, E2 will be received from E1, E2 will be received from whatever you're adding E1, E2 object here, right? And then that will be getting the ID. Using the ID, it is going to compare whether it is equal or greater than or less than, and then according it is going to return results. So this is how actually comparable and compared interface works. But yeah. Okay. So this is really important to understand when you go for real-time programming. So I hope you guys have understand this one. Uh, any questions, Nitya? No, Karthik. I'm clear. Okay, perfect. So I would strongly recommend you to write your program and then see so that you will have some more questions we'll discuss in the next class. Oh. Mm -hmm. Sure, Karthik. Okay. So tomorrow, about um, this one, okay, these three topics, so that tomorrow we'll complete all our deep dive into collection will be completed so that you can focus on uh, multi-threading after that okay so that tomorrow we'll complete enumeration iterator and list iterator these three will complete tomorrow and then we will go through with the multi-threading concept definitely this will be a fun uh, by learning multi-threading eagerly waiting for you to teach this concept all right. Uh, if you don't have any question, then you can wind up and then we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Have a good day. Okay. Okay, Kathy. Thanks. Bye.